Hey, welcome to Let's Fly VFR. Today we're doing crosswind landings practice in 19 knots. So get your feet and your hands ready. Let's go flying. Welcome to Let's Fly VFR. All in next plane 11. Props, jets, and much more. All done in real world weather. make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you. And welcome to Caller and welcome to Let's Fly VFR. Today we're going to do some crosswind landing practice. Today we're going to primarily test landing in different configurations. We want to land in full flap configuration with flap 2 and without flaps at all, just to see what the differences are like, and they are substantial. And the reason for this as well is because of the amount of wind we have today, we have 19 knots coming for strictly from the north, which is going to give us a, uh, a reasonable crosswind. So we're gonna need our wind correction in today. We're also going to need to have our wits about us so we keep ourselves on the runway, so. Let's get the office ready. So let's check everything, make sure everything is ready to go. We've got fuel. We have our, we need to get our masters on as well so we can get started. Let's check all the switches in the right place. Our fuel's on, our fuel cut off at the bottom, that red buttons is in. We need to put our mixture in so we can get the engine started. Got a handbrake on there, down underneath the control panel. Let's put our, yeah, get that on. Get that on just crack the throttle a little we've got our battery on let's turn the key just check around first check right and left and you call clear prop make sure it's all clear don't just call it and do it check it out okay there we go engines up and running check our engine instruments there make sure they're all in the green Make sure we have vacuum, make sure we have some temperature. We'll get some temperature in a little anyway. Let's check our altimeter, 165 feet. So we just need to come back a little bit on that one. We've got a nice clear day to go flying. So I'm gonna sit in the right seat. You guys can sit in the left seat and you do the flying, okay? And I'll just talk you through it and try and keep us all in one piece for the day. Always very challenging crosswind landings. Uh, I was watching an article this week and uh, they were talking about, I think it's from uh, IOPA, how many uh, crashes happen and what percentage happen on takeoff and landing and a lot of it's in crosswind, especially for uh, LSA pilots or light sport pilots like myself. We have light aeroplanes which are affected more by the wind, not so much the case with the Cessna. And um, maybe people don't train as much or practice as much um, and they get caught out and they get flipped and they get all sorts of things happening. So we've got a bit of airspace, as you can see there on the uh, GPS. We have uh, the military airbase, Edinburgh Air Force Base, which I used to work at, uh, sort of across in front of us. And we have airspace only oh, a couple of, maybe a kilometer, two kilometers to our immediate right that we have to stay with inside. So just to keep track of where you are, it's always a really great idea, I think, to use the heading bug. Anytime you're changing direction on a nav flight, dial it in so you can remember where you need to be going. You've got a very quick reference to get back there. You can hear the stall warning whining in the background. That's because the wind's going in the wrong direction over the wind at the wing at the moment. It's coming from over our right shoulder. That's where north is. So we're going to need a wind correction as we taxi out. We're going to taxi down to runway 05. So we're going to come down our um, taxiway here, out past the main hangars here at Gawler. It's a bit of a flying day today. There's a few gliders out ready to go flying. If you're ever in the area and you'd like to go for a fly, Wednesdays and Saturdays they go flying here they have training days and uh, you can book an instructor if you want to go flying in one of the Jabiroos 
you know, contact them in advance though they're pretty well booked up but yeah call in advance come out and fly with uh with carl or sue or any of the the really great instructors they have out here so we're taxiing down we need to make sure our engine's warming up a little bit it's always take a little bit of time only taxi about walking pace guys just about walking pace is enough and we're holding in our wind correction remember if the wind is behind us and in this case from our right as we we're currently going we dive away from it it's the easiest way to remember so we do a quick clear before we go across the the runway and you can make a radio call call the traffic Cessna 172 crossing runway 314 the taxiway it's all about just information here when you're flying especially LSA you need to uh, make your radio calls just let people know what you're doing because you have no tower to uh, keep, a, keep a, a secondary eye on you it's always your own responsibility so let's get around here you can see how much wind it is you know 90 knots there's the uh, windsock you can see it is pretty rigid now I'll leave some timestamps for you guys if you've got this far and you're going I wish you'd hurry up uh, well I'll put some timestamps down there for you so you can jump we're going to do three takeoffs and or one takeoff and two touch and goes after that and then a full stop landing to make the three and takes you back in and hopefully we would have learnt something by then so we're going to come up to our uh, stop point here before we enter the runway and what do we need to do now yeah we need to do the magneto check don't we so brakes on 1700 rpm in the Cessna you need to check your own pilot operating handbook to uh, find out what you need to do for that okay check our flight controls we check our instruments quickly again just keep checking the things make sure everything's all right make sure nothing has stopped working okay so let's run it up to 1700 or 17 on the dial you can hold your wind correction in as well. The wind is pretty strong today. Now we're going to check our magnetos, make sure they're operating. So we turn one off, a minimal drop 50 to 100 RPM. Turn it back up, it should recover. Go back to the two, get a drop, should recover. When you come back up again, it's all looking good. Suction in that one there, and uh, everything's working well. We've got everything in the green, so pretty good okay let's back off the throttle check around the pattern so we look right duck down and have a look check out to the left make sure nothing's coming in and check ahead see if there's anything flying you can often catch an aircraft just under the visor there if there's one running down on the downwind And taxi out and we'll taxi back you always use as much runways you have available I see the lazy people I do I have seen it taxi out from here turn right and away they go I've seen people turn out from the hangars turn left when this is the the active runway coming in this current direction and take off it's really poor airmanship you go as far back as you possibly can and you start there that gives you more time if you have an engine failure during takeoff to put the aircraft down and land safely there's always a little bit extra uh, friction out here on the dirt we have a dirt runway this is an old bomber airbase guys during world war ii there was all sorts of things flying in and out of here let's get back on our um, convenient little takeoff strips If you happen to live in this area and you would like a copy of any of my airports, you're more than welcome. Feel free just to send me a message and I will uh, send it to you. All free. I don't charge for anything like that. I'm happy that you guys want to use them. I've got lots and lots of airports. So let's check our controls. Let's get back in the job. Checking our controls, checking our instruments once more. You can see that we've got a fair old wing component from ahead of us. Now it is about off to the left 
about 40 degrees or so, 30, 40 degrees to the left. That's where north is. You can check where north is on the compass. You can just see it down there. You can see the end, so you know the wind is 19 knots. So we haven't got a full 19 knot component because we are not heading directly into it and it's not directly from our left. So it might be 13, 14 knots physical crosswind component as we go. So let's check everything's all ready to go. Check our wind correction. Slowly add power. And brakes off. And away we go. Call the traffic. Cessna 172 rolling on runway 05. And let's do it again from the outside. Now here you can see all the controls. You can see the wind's immediately trying to take it point in there along with the PFAC which is trying to turn the aircraft into the, that direction as well. That makes it even harder. We've got two factors trying to make you turn left. So we get our takeoff speed, we rotate it 55 to 60 knots and away we go. And you can see the wind is blowing us across. So let's do it from inside. And on your wind correction you can see the aircraft as we get off, pretty much immediately starts to point into the wind. So I just relax the rudders there. And you can see that we're not flying straight down the strip and we're being blown sideways. This is a good time to learn how much wind correction you need. Because every time you do it, it will be different. So really, we need a few more degrees left to, to maintain the track. Although we seem to be tracking all right now. Okay, we're coming up to 500 feet. We're going to turn left on our upwind. Don't tend to make a radio call here, but we do on our downwind turn. So I'll do that for you as we uh, we get ready. So we'll check out to our right. We'll check ahead. We'll check left down the pattern. And you always make a check back on the airport as well. Um, not so much maybe the first one because we've just taken off, but certainly check when you're, you're midway down and make sure that there's no one now taxiing out and taking off for an ultralight or someone who hasn't got a radio or something like that. So check left and right, call the traffic, Cessna 172 turning left downwind for runway 05. Caller. So I'm trying to, I want you to try and leave yourself a little bit of wind correction. It's blowing from over your right shoulder. So it's going to try and push you one very quickly down away from its direction. So it's going to blow us in this direction very quickly and also you want to try and maintain your distance from the airport so you need a little bit of right turn fed in so your normal uh, zero uh, normal two three heading that you would fly might be a little bit it might be 27 it might be 270 you might need to add another five or ten degrees now we're moving down very quickly so again let's get ahead of it we check our brakes fuel quantities fuel switch harness hatches and heat if we had some this aircraft doesn't have it but you would have the heat on now to prevent icing as your air pressure drops it's a carby if you get some cooler you shouldn't have an issue today we're a little high so rpm back call the traffic cessna 172 turning left base for runway 05 caller now we set up, remember it's pitch controls your airspeed and power will control your descent. Now I've left the power off fairly low because we need to descend fairly quickly. Let's check where we are in reference to the runway. Normally we would be coming in over those trees over there so you can see how much wind has made a difference to uh, our leg. I'm just gentle turn, just keep it going. And we'll make our final call, call the traffic Cessna 172 turning final for runway 05 Gawler. Okay, we're getting lined up. Yay, we didn't overturn. Okay, we're nicely lined up. So now we're at full stage flaps. We're full flaps. Remember, don't let it balloon. Push down, push forward a little on the on the yokes. Just do your trim. Check your power. We're a little low at 60 knots. We want to be at 70, flying in and over the threshold. You can see the wind correction's already in. So in these examples, 
what we're going to do is we're going to maintain the wind correction by pointing into the wind an amount that keeps us lined up with the runway and as we touch down we're going to use our rudders to, to correct our latitude uh, longitudinal direction so to straighten us up and then we're going to feed in the wind correction so that'll be the left rudder so kick the rudder right still a little bit sideways there let's try again from the inside okay so as we come in and remember change your view from the point you want to land to the far end of the runway now and reference the cowling against the horizon there we are we did land on the left which is fine we want to land on the upwind leg everything away trim away powering back up keeping control of the aircraft moving around okay we're just off the side but that's okay keep the correction 60 knots rotate and climb out okay we're looking for our vy our best climb speed Here we are back on the downwind okay getting ready to land again okay first stage flap push forward trim getting ready to turn base call the traffic Cessna 172 turning base for runway 05 Gola now we'll see what the wind affects is it easier to land with a little bit less flap that's really the whole point of these three circuits that we're doing. It is recommended by uh, CFIs, and I'm going to put Cindy's uh, list of videos at the in the cards at the end, maybe, I think, again today. Go and have a look. She's a real CFI. She does basically a ground school, and uh, she points out all of the things that I'm trying, or we're trying to do here in the aircraft. Call the traffic, Cessna 172, turning final for runway 05, touch and go. Caller. You don't have to mention what you're doing, but if you have an intention, doesn't mean you have to do it. If you get down there and everything is a mess, you land really long, something goes wrong, you need to decide before then, are you going to go around or are you going to complete the landing? 66 knots ground speed at the moment. And we're showing... Well, we're showing uh, more towards 80 knots airspeed so you can see the difference you can quickly reference the actual airspeed factor that you're looking at okay lined up again pretty well aircraft is uh, pointing into the wind to the left there out to the north okay okay we maintain the crab still and we need to push the right rudder the left correction and well not too long considering the lines there is where we're supposed to touch down or as close to that as possible so let's move into this okay doing well now you've got your takeoff your landing point landing line there we're just coming into with the numbers so anytime you can actually land before that here it doesn't really matter but nose up, referencing the far end of the runway. And there we go, left wheel down, straighten us up. You want to be straight if you can, because you don't want to put excess load on one side of the undercarriage. Okay, cleaning up, trimming, flaps away, power up, lateral control, rudders, 60 knots, climbing out. It all happens very quickly, doesn't it? Okay, let's put ourselves again back on the downwind side of things. Okay, we're all actually turning into final here. Yeah, we're on base. 
We missed the base call. Got the traffic. Cessna 172 turning final for runway 05 Golo. Again, you can use the touch and go if you want, but it's not necessary. It's just additional information. Get ourselves lined up. We're a little bit left of centre. Move yourself in. Line up again. That's good. Check your speed. Speed's a little hot. A little bit high. And certainly our air speed. It would be interesting just to check what our ground speed is here. So let's come in over the top. You can see the crab angle still there. No flaps this time. Landing fairly long on this particular one, it looks like. You can see the wind's moving the aircraft off. So there's not really enough. But once we get on the ground, we get the correction. here we go now Cindy who's the CFI uh, she recommends considering doing a flaps zero or nil flaps landing if you're having a really big crosswind because it's so much more drag and it's more uh, wind effects on the aircraft if you've got the flaps all the way down so it's something you have to make a decision before you uh, make the landing so there we go a little bit of a, a left Get that corrected, wind, wind correction in. Okay, we're stopped. So, we've got that pulled up. Tidy everything up. Fuel pumps off. Allow if you put your wind correction in. Let's turn around. And we will head back into the parking area. Got the traffic system 172 backtracking on one runway 05. Got the traffic system 172 clear of all runways. Caller. Taxi and just watch the taxi speed slow up a little bit, get the wind correction. Remember, neutral on the elevator if the wind is coming from in front at least. Diving away, you need a little bit of forward on that one. Just a moment while we turn around. Now, lots to think of. You've got your hands doing one thing, your feet are doing something independent. You've got to keep your head around all of that. So I hope that was uh, helpful for you guys. Hope you enjoyed that. If you're new here, then feel free to subscribe if you like what you see. There's lots and lots more videos on the channel. If you're a returning viewer, then really happy to have you back. Thank you for that. And uh, keep hitting those like buttons for me as well. And if you've got any questions, I've been getting more and more questions, which I really don't mind at all. It's really nice to hear from you guys. So feel free to uh, send me a message. I heard someone ask me about building an airport yesterday, so I might build them an airport in the next couple of days. Okay, let's turn everything off. We just need quickly to check our magnetos are still all functioning, so we turn one off. The engine continues to run, we know it's working. Let's recover, there's a little drop, not much. One more time, check the other magneto. It's a dual, dual ignition system, if you want to think of it that way. And we'll turn off our avionics. And shut down. Okay. So, good flight. Let's turn the key off and uh, hop out. And we'll catch you again here. Again on Let's Fly VFR for another flight very soon. Make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you.